Hello everyone. Today we will continue our topic pathogenicity and virulence. I am Dr. Sharad Deshmukh from S. H. Jaiswar College, Arjunim Murga. So now let us start our remaining next part of the determinants of the virulence. Before that we will repeat one again. The determinants of virulence are the adhesion, invasiveness, toxicity, enzymes, antifibrocytic factor, survival within fibrocyte, infecting dose, genetic factor, route of infection, and communicability. So in this case, we have already seen earlier the two factors and today we are going to see about the toxicity. And this is one of the major factor in the bacterial infection, the toxicity. Because of the production of the toxin, the various bacterial strain are responsible for the pathogenic effect. As far as the bacteria is concerned, the bacteria produce the two types of the toxin. Number one is exotoxin and second is the endotoxin. First we will see about the exotoxin. What are their various properties we should know about the exotoxin. The first one, as they are freely secreted, they are heat labile protein. That means they are protein in nature. This is most important character. They are actively secreted by the cell, just I have already told, they are actively secreted by the cell and diffuse into the surrounding medium. This is the next character of the exotoxin. Then it is active in very minute doses. That means even the very very small quantity of the toxin is able to cause the harm to the human. The one of the best example is the toxin produced by the Clostridium botulinum. So the Clostridium botulinum produces the toxin which is responsible for the food poisoning. Only one milligram of the toxin produced by this organism is responsible to kill the hundreds and thousands of the mouse. So you can imagine how toxigenic power it has. So these exotoxins are very active in minute doses also. Then they are highly antigenic. So everybody know the antigenic means their ability to induce the immune response. That is as they are the toxin they can induce the production of the antitoxin. As they are the highly antigenic. So this antigenic nature is also important mainly in protecting the human being because we can produce the antitoxin they can be antitoxin are produced that can be neutralized by our body uh, which are produced by these organisms the next they can be toxided so this is also one of the most important character toxide means and toxin means, this two term you should remember. Toxin means it is the toxin which is harmful. But when the toxin is treated with a specific chemical agent, they will lose their virulence power. But they retain their antigenicity. These are known as the toxides. So for that purpose the term used is the toxide. So toxide are antigenic. That is just I have told they are highly antigenic but they lost their toxigenicity and that's why they can be used as a they can be used for protecting against the toxigenic effect of this organism that are known as the toxide and this can be toxided. The next character is their action may be the enzymatic. So that they are enzymatic in action and this that's why they act very specifically coming to the next character this toxin that is exotoxin they have the very specific tissue affinity so they can act on only specific tissue they have the affinity to specific tissue 
So next character will suggest you the specific effect for each toxin. So as they have the specific tissue affinity, so they have the specific effect for each toxin means the toxin produced by different types of the bacteria. What they produce the toxin each having the specific effect. They are not having the common effect. They are having the specific effect and they are acting specifically towards the particular tissue. Next one, they do not produce the fever. This toxin, they do not produce the fever. Then again, this one character possessed by this one. So they are mainly produced by the gram positive organisms. So this is the another character, mainly gram positive organisms are able to produce this toxin. But there are certain exceptions. They are also produced by some gram negative bacteria also. But majority, majority of the organism producing this exotoxin is the gram positive bacteria. Now we will come to the characteristics of the endotoxin. So this endotoxin is integral part of the cell of the gram negative bacteria. Now you can see here, just I have mentioned earlier only the gram negative bacteria. While in the exotoxin, we have already seen they are mainly produced by the gram positive bacteria. But the endotoxin is formed as an integral part of the cell wall of the gram negative bacteria. Then it is heat stable lipopolysaccharide, what we shortly call LPS. So it is the heat stable and it is the lipopolysaccharide in nature. While uh, earlier we have seen that the exotoxin was the protein in nature. This is the chemical nature of this toxin. Next character, they are not secreted outside the cell. They are released only by disintegration of the cell wall. This is the most important difference between the exotoxin and the endotoxin. So these are not freely secreted. That's why they are not heat labile, they are heat stable. While the exotoxins are freely secreted, that's why they are the heat labile one. And these are released only by the disintegration of the cell wall of a particular bacteria, that is the gram negative bacteria that will release the endotoxin. So they cannot be toxided. Earlier we have already mentioned what is the toxin and what is toxide. So these endotoxin, they cannot be toxided. That is another property they possess. Then they are pure antigenic. That means they are purely antigenic. They are not so strongly antigenic like the exotoxin. This is another most important difference in the exotoxin and the endotoxin. So their toxicity is not completely neutralized. Generally the antitoxin can neutralize the toxigenicity. But here the endotoxin cannot be completely neutralized by the antitoxin. That is another property they possess. They are active only in the large doses. Just earlier we have seen the exotoxins are highly effective or they are in minute doses also they are more toxigenic. Here they are active only in the very large doses. So for that purpose there should be the disintegration of the large number of the cell wall of a bacteria then and only then that will be more effective. They have no specific pharmacological activity. This is another character possessed by the endotoxin. All endotoxins produce the similar effect that is the elevation of the body temperature. So here the effect is the similar for all endotoxin and uh, that is the body temperature is elevated while in the exotoxin they do not elevate the body temperature. So these are the various characteristic but before going to enzymes so we should able to dis uh, differentiate between the exotoxins and the endotoxin and we have seen the various characteristic that the exotoxin is protein, these are lipopolysaccharide, exotoxin is heat labile, it is heat stable, this is a highly antigenic exotoxin, endotoxin is less antigenic, they can be toxided, they cannot be toxided. In this way you should able to differentiate this exotoxin and endotoxin. 
so next factor we will see the enzymes so these also play a most important role in the damage to the host tissue so bacteria produce the various enzymes which are directly damaging the host tissues now what are these various enzymes which are responsible for the host damage these enzymes are the first one we will see the proteases so these proteases are able to break down the immunoglobulin IgA which is protecting the mucosal surface so IgA is the most important in uh, giving the local immunity where they are present in the mucosal secretions and these are destroyed by the proteases enzyme which is produced by the bacteria so you lose the protection at the particular local site so next enzyme is the kinase so kinase it enhances the spread of the bacteria by dissolving the fibrin clot for example streptococci the streptococcus pyogens is able to produce the enzyme streptokinase this enzyme is responsible for spreading the infection by dissolving the fibrin clot and that's why they can cause the spreading lesion as they are producing these enzymes the third one is the hyaluronidase hyaluronidase that is it break down the hyaluronic acid and spread to the infection and that's why it causes the spreading infection this is responsible for to dissolve the cement substance in the cell and that's why they are able to cause the deep infection and the spreading lesion when the person get affected by the bacteria which are producing this type of the enzyme the next one is the enzyme coagulase it causes the deposition of the fibrin around the bacteria so due to the formation of the fibrin around the bacteria they are not easily phagocytosed and it is mainly produced by the staphylococcus aureus the next enzyme which is contributing is the collagenase this enzyme playing the most important role to spread the infection to the deeper and deeper side so it is responsible or it breaks the collagen in the connective tissue there is a collagen present in the connective tissue and it is breaking down this collagen and it is mainly produced by the organism like clostridium perfringens or clostridium welchii it is also known as clostridium welchii which are responsible for the gas gangrene so they are able to produce this enzyme they are breaking the collagen and that's why the infection spread so rapidly that the in gas gangrene you have to remove the part there is the need of the amputation in the that way they are spreading so fastly due to the en enzyme produced by this organism so all these enzymes are contributing to the virulence of the bacteria the next important is the antiphagocytic factor so what are these various antiphagocytic factor the first one is the most important is the capsule so the capsulated bacteria such as pneumococci and Hemophilus influenzae are not readily phagocytized because they possess the capsule. Capsule, everybody we already know the capsule is the present surrounding the cell wall, and due to the presence of the capsule, they are not easily phagocytosed. That is by the defense mechanism by the human body. So, in addition to this, the bacterial surface antigen such as the V antigen of the Staphylococci. that is also responsible for the anti phagocytic activity similarly the in e coli there is a k antigen which help the bacteria to withstand the phagocytosis and the lytic activity of the complement so due to the presence of this uh, antigen they are not easily killed by the primary defense mechanism of the body that is the phagocytosis and the lytic activity of the complement system so that they can survive you and they can uh, spread the infection in the body so in this way they are contributing to the virulence that is anti phagocytic factor so next one is the survival within the phagocyte although 
just I have told that uh, some like the capsules they are preventing the phagocytosis but there are some microorganisms or the bacteria which are phagocytosed but they can survive within the phagocytosis. Some pathogens like the tubercle bacillus that is mycobacterium tuberculosis can be phagocytosed by the macrophages and the phagocytes but they resist the intracellular killing mechanism. So although they are phagocytosed, they are resisting this mechanism, the killing process by the phagocytosis. They are mainly by preventing the fusion of the phagosome and the lysosome. That will help to survive them within the phagocytosis, phagocyte and they remain live and they can multiply and they can cause the spreading lesion. Uh, these organisms multiply inside the cell and help to remain spread. Another one is the Staphylococcus aureus and Nigeria gonorrhoeae. They resist the action of the lysosomal component following the fusion. So they are also responsible to resist this action of the lysosomal component following the fusion. Just we are told that the phagosomes and lysosome fusion is necessary to kill the bacteria but these two are able to resist this mechanism and that will successful in their infection even though they are uh, going to the process of the phagocytosis. So now we will stop here and we will continue into the next lecture that is in the next part the remaining virulence factor. Thank you.